Hey what's up guys, welcome to a new video. Judging by the thumbnail and title, you guys know this is a serious one. And when it comes to serious videos, I do not play about my facts. Stay up until the end of the video so that you guys can see why I say Rev Wayne should be in jail for fraud. Please don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, leave your comments in the comment section, please do share this around. And if you're new here, I welcome you to my channel, please find that subscribe button for me. I know you guys are excited to get into today's video, but before we get there, let me plug you with something awesome that I currently have going on. So currently I am giving away this HP laptop to the value of 6,000 Rand and all you have to do is sign up with an FSCA regulator broker to win it. So use the link in my description, open an account with the FSCA regulator broker HFM, open an account, deposit funds, Please play some trades because that way your account number gets entered into the lucky draw. And at the end of the month, we will pick an account number and the owner of that account number will be sent this laptop. Now, don't despair if you don't win this laptop because there will be future prizes as well. Now, let's get into today's fraudulent story. You guys most definitely know that Rev Wayne is no stranger to this channel and previously when he... Or when I said I'm gonna speak about Pipcoin, he got really angry, he cursed me, I was sick for a couple of days, but eventually I came to making the video. Now, at that point, I made that video out of a retaliation standpoint, and today I am clear, I don't have anything against him, I am in a clear state of mind, I just want to show you guys why I say Ref Wayne should be in jail for fraud. Now, what is is fraud i think it is really important for us to learn what is fraud before we claim anyone is fraudulent so um fraud is any activity that relies heavily on deception for a gain and very often the gain is a financial gain now fraud becomes a crime when people knowingly knowingly misrepresents the truth or conceals a material fact to induce others to spend their money with them, money that they would not have spent with them otherwise. So basically, if you have lied to get money out of people or an organization, you have committed fraud. For us in this case, we just have someone that not only lied to a few people, a church or a community, we have someone that lied to the whole of South Africa because he was paraded all over SABC as this wonder boy that just makes money. I'm going to take you guys through some clips and then knowing the definition of fraud, you guys can decide if Riff Wayne engaged in fraudulent activities or not. Master Forex Trader and also the founder of Pipcoin. I'm so excited really to, to be here now and really sharing something powerful with you. There's something exciting that is happening right now. We've got wonderful things coming out. I'm talking about Pipcoin. Uh, Pipcoin is Africa's first cryptocurrency. This is something exciting. I said it's exciting because uh, people do not understand what I'm talking about when I'm talking about cryptocurrency. A uh, cryptocurrency now is great. It's powerful. It's happening. It's in the now. It's a breakthrough. You have to be able to understand what it means when you talk about cryptocurrency. Now remember that there's something that has been happening. We've been having Bitcoin now as a digital currency. But now we are talking about the full transformation into cryptocurrency. Now we are merging from what the old system into the new system. It's a new age. And it's time for you to be a participant of the new system. Uh, there is no promise of any 35% uh, 
return on investment, there is no promise of any return of investment. Not only does that put us in a legal, safe position, but also in a, in a safe, uh, sustainable position. Because now, without any guarantees, we know that the market is determined by what? Supply and demand. And also economic factors. Now, we are going to have people called uh, Pipcoin Forex traders. Pipcoin Forex traders are people who are trading Pipcoin daily. They are then going to invest in pip coins. Let's say you are buying uh, $20 worth of pip coins. Currently, the new price of pip coin is at least uh, fluctuating in between $20 and $25. Now, the pip coin traders, what are they going to do? They are going to be able to say, now, with these pip coins that you have invested, with the supply and demand, determined by those forces of supply and demand, I am going to make profit out of that. So you can even find yourself making more than 35% that you could have waited for month end or per month. So making the new system much more powerful because now you invest $20 in buying a coin or oh, already two minutes later because of the demand, the price is at $40. You are already at a profit of 100%. My vision as the founder of Pipcoin is to mm -hmm. see one thing at least achieved, which is poverty alleviation. <laughs> At least if you have alleviated poverty with this system or this lifestyle or this movement, Pip Quiet, that would be at least the first step of the vision. But wholeheartedly, mm -hmm. I would really say the vision of Pip Quiet is to create unlimited profits for anyone who is participating in it. To alleviate poverty and create wealth. To shift the earth from where it is mm -hmm. and become a new dimension for everyone. Prosperity, abundance, success should be the word of the day mm. through people. So, as you guys can see, that was the first video that I just played for you guys. And that was an introduction video that Riff Wayne made for Pipcoin. Now, the reason why I'm playing you this is because, and uh, for all of the other clips, is because these are things that he spoke with his own mouth. In there, the first claim that he made was, this is Africa's first cryptocurrency. Now, the reason that is important is because when you look at interviews and and um, podcasts that he goes on to in today's time, he will say he like brings it down from a cryptocurrency, brings it down to a digital currency project that didn't work. But as you guys have clearly heard out of his own mouth, he said it is Africa's first cryptocurrency. Another thing that really struck me odd is the fact that he said there is no promises or guarantees of returns. I promise you the reason why he said that um, they don't promise or guarantee returns of 35%, 45%, he disarmed you with 35% there. He made you aware of 35% then. Like I said, keep it in your head. We're gonna come visit that later on. Another thing that I found highly disingenuous is in this very same video that he is not promising or guaranteeing in returns, he makes examples of buying in at certain prices, then you would have made 100% profit on your money. That is highly disingenuous. And another thing that really struck me odd is the fact that Riff Wayne constantly beats on this drum that he has a vision for alleviating poverty. He has this image for South Africans that they will be prosperity, abundance and success for everyone. Why? Because Pipcoin has this unlimited pool of profits. He claimed this in the very same video that he just said they are not promising any returns. What is Pipcoin? Pipcoin is Africa's first digital currency. Pipcoins are digital coins you can send through the internet. Pipcoin is wonderful and has a lot of advantages. Pipcoins are not physical or tangible. That is why they can be transferred directly from person to person online without having to go through a bank or finance department, making the fees super low. You can use them in every country you wish. Your account cannot be frozen. And there are send or receive limits. Several Pipcoin exchanges can exist where you can buy and sell Pipcoin for rands, dollars, 
euros, and more. Your PIP coins are kept in a digital wallet on your computer or mobile device. Sending PIP coins is as simple as sending an email. Oh, and you can purchase anything with PIP coin. The PIP coin network is highly secured by people called miners. Miners are basically people who provide their computer or hardware to be used as storage and verifying transactions and are rewarded. Now, the importance of the second clip is because there is a statement made that you can buy anything with PIPCOIN. And I find that highly, highly disingenuous because in that time, Bitcoin hasn't even been adopted into shops yet. Yet this bold claim is being made that you can buy anything anywhere with Popcoin. On the 14th of February 2016, Ref Wayne had an interview on um, one of the SABC shows. I'm really going to need you guys to pay attention to this clip because there's a lot of things that he says in this clip that is just a bold-faced lie. This is on website, the pipcoins.co.za uh, or pipcoin.co.za. You can just go there. And then there we've got our own web platform. You can purchase pip, uh, pip coins. You can also, at the same time, what is most likely to happen, you find people having their own uh, bitcoins. You can now, with bitcoins, exchange them to pipcoins and start using our own uh, uh, currency now in Africa. Uh, Ref Wayne, our first answer tonight was yeah. about um, fraud that takes place online. Mm. How do I know yeah. that this is not just a, a, a fraudulent scheme, a scheme yes. rather, that, that wants to take money out of my pocket? I go on this website, yeah. I purchase pipcoins, <laughs> and suddenly I've lost money, never <laughs> to get it back. How do I know uh, this? That we call it the most important system, a P2P network structure. That is what we call a decentralized exchange. There's proof of work that you are the sole owner of the PIP coin. How? You are purchasing from someone else, from his computer, not from a central exchange, where you are paying now Ref Wayne uh, to buy. No, not paying from me. You are paying from someone else who is right now in uh, acquisition of that PIP coins. That makes it sure that there's no one that can run away here. There's no system that can shut, shut down. It's a peer-to-peer, friend-to-friend system and mm. network. Referring, uh, Bitcoins have had a few problems in the past. Yes. Um, there was a time when they stopped trading for a very short mm -hmm. period of time. Um, there was a time when, they, uh, when their value dropped, um, especially after Silk Road, after people were purchasing mm -hmm. um, illegal substances on, on the website Silk Road. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I trust this particular method? That is why now uh, Bitcoin was an experiment. And with that experiment, I went through the coding, the algorithm, uh, the programming. I started to see uh, faults. Then I said, now, this is the fault. First of all, you cannot track uh, Bitcoin. If someone steals your Bitcoin right now, you must forget. If someone hacks into your Bitcoin uh, wallet right now, you must forget. Why? Because Bitcoin is an open source. Open source means anyone can use it. Now, in Bitcoin, we have now secured our infrastructure. How? We have serial codes. If your PIP coin gets lost, we can track it down. Fraud, uh, theft, and anything that has to do with cyber crimes, we can track it. How? With that serial code. We can see exactly what happened, what went to it, and track it down. Mm. What's the value of one PIP coin? 100 rand right now. Okay, so one coin is 100 rand, yes. and what can I, where can I buy goods with it? How, where do I yes. use it? Uh, right now, since it's a new uh, digital currency, we've had uh, some stores, online stores, e-commerce stores coming to us, ask, asking us to integrate our API, uh, which is our application uh, interface, to their websites so that they can accept it as a payment. As for now, people has be, have been buying and selling to each one another, and through supply and demand, it's just skyrocketing. All right, Refrain, thank you very much for joining us. Yes, <laughs> thanks so much. All right, Refrain is the founder of a virtual currency, Pipcoin. The first thing that really struck me as odd is the fact that this guy is a whole billionaire, but he's sitting up there with dusty old church shoes. A few things that he mentioned in here that is just suspicious as hell is the fact that he says that Pipcoin is exclusive and that Popcoin can be exchanged for money and we most definitely know that is cap. Another thing that he really lied about big time is the fact that he said they will be introducing a Popcoin Mastercard which means that you will be able to 
take your funds out of your popcorn wallet and withdraw it to your bank account straight through that card it's so easy for anyone to just email mastercard to find out if this is true and the journalist simon brown actually did and they denied it so i don't know where this guy thought he was going to get away with this he also in here mentioned that it is a peer-to-peer -peer structure which i say it is big cap because at the peak of popcoin there were 66,000 people now that is not a lot but it is an ecosystem of people and if they were trading like he is claiming they are on this news channel then I don't understand why it failed another thing that he mentioned here is also that you do not buy coins from the um, from a central uh, exchange which i also say is cap because you have to go to his website to go and buy pop coins and after you have bought pop coins you will find that you are now stuck with useless tokens you can't even use it at the games in grand west mebro now one thing that really made me understand that ref wayne is one of the biggest pop eyes is this interview that they had on sabc now previously this slipped me no but i'm gonna need you to listen what this guy says when this lady asks him how does the forex industry contribute to the economy of South Africa? How is that sector contributing to the growth of the economy of South Africa? It's, it's going larger. I'm telling people that right now people like to say, how is the economy doing? I said, I've got a problem about people that don't, they're not really, I can say, contributing much into the economy. I think people are, are reliant on factors, external factors, and they don't know that they can contribute to the economy. I mean, if you can um, find yourself speculating as well or find yourself learning how to trade in the market yeah. you can also i mean the rand was falling down i was one of the few people who was buying it up you know we are, we are optimistic we can we can really shift and change the market forward if people can become so optimistic. how do people get educated about these things now a sane person would say that if you are trading forex you are contributing to the economy of south africa by paying your taxes if you are making all of these withdrawals obviously you're gonna have a high tax bill so that means that is one way how you are um, contributing to the economy of south africa secondly if you are working with big money you are most definitely going to be making use of the services of an accountant so employment you can now open businesses employment because you are employing people and paying them they can also now pay taxes which contributes to the economy of south africa but did you hear the answer that Revoin said and this is the people that you guys think is an authority in this field now i'm gonna revisit that 35 percent right now that i told you guys to just keep up in your head for me for a minute now you guys must definitely know that it is hard to pinpoint someone saying that number 35 percent right and i think the best thing we can do right now is show you guys the payment excel spreadsheet that they had that they would send to clients so that people would know if you invested this amount of money this is what your 35 percent would bring you and this is why ref wayne said in the beginning there is no promises or guarantees of returns from 35 percent 45 percent like guys he disarmed you to rob you later on with that 35 percent and that is highly 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 disingenuous never mind fraudulent but hey who am i to say i am just a little youtuber so take a look at the xl spreadsheet here you guys can see how they lured 
people in and i mean this looks promising as hell now i'm gonna need you guys to pay attention to the fact that on my tiktok i already made a video and i already made an announcement to say that i'll be releasing something in the name of riff wayne and popcoin and someone commented this saying i hope he gets arrested my mother invested so many thousands and lost so many thousands through riff wayne now i'm not saying this to be vindictive i'm not saying this to be spiteful i'm not saying this to be harmful or anything but there's so many older people that fell for this why because they saw this lady being paraded on sabc on the news their trusted news source and that my dear ladies and gentlemen is how the sabc is complicit in this lady's scams because when he got caught out when popcorn failed no one at the sabc had interviews with him to clarify uh things up they didn't care that's why i'm here Another thing that I also want to show you guys is a job description that this man put out for a web developer. Now, this is like entry-level nonsense, right? But the reason why I'm showing you guys this is because on this, and you guys can pause to read because I'm not gonna like pause that long on this thing, but for this to be a cryptocurrency, right? He or the guy on... Um, that is gonna do the the web development right he would have to integrate some way somehow he would have to integrate some blockchain technology there onto the website uh, no, no <laughs> that didn't happen that didn't happen why as you guys can read here there's no way a description of we'll be working with cryptocurrencies and because um, we are mining it. And, and let me just get that straight. According to their own admission, miners are just people that borrow their, their um, resources to bank other people's cryptos. Whereas in cryptocurrency, a miner is someone that mines. They have bought themselves the, the tools to be able to mine coins for themselves. So, I'm guys, I'm telling you straight out, this is a fraud from jump. So, there is a few closing arguments that I would also like to make. And the first one is, an, and I've actually jotted it down. Eh? The first one that I've made is that Popcoin was never a cryptocurrency because it was never decentralized. You could not mine your own cryptocurrencies called Popcoin. So, therefore, because you had to go buy it on his website, there was always a central location. And the central location is his website. Uh, promised profit profits of 1% and 35% per month that is just too insane because the 1% is what he promised per day and max people could max 35% per month now i need you to understand that this is what he saw at mti like literally this is what he saw at other uh, cryptocurrency investment uh, schemes that also turned out to be scams by the way there was no available coin supply information so you don't know how many pop coins in reality there is and because there is no coin supply information there is no information on how new coins are created one thing that we know for sure is that because there was no blockchain it wasn't mined a very the outlandish claim that Rev Wayne made was that the investors that invested into Popcoin and bought Popcoin, they would not lose any money. And that is capped because everyone that invested, they lost their money. Another thing that I find really suspicious is the fact that Popcoin had no blockchain, first off, right? And then when Rev Wayne made it possible, right, he copied and pasted blockchain.info which is bitcoin's block explorer right so because popcoin had no block explorer and because he didn't write it up he copied and pasted and he replaced all of the words bitcoin with popcoin 
<laughs> How disingenuous. And this is someone that's an authority in the field. A plagiarist. The project had absolutely no code supporting it and that is highly suspicious because you are dealing with a cryptocurrency which is highly reliant on coding. Clients didn't have access to mobile or desktop wallets and because of that there was little to no. Let me rather, rather just say it like that. I'm not going to spare everyone. There was no support for clients. Now I'm going to need you guys to pay careful attention to what I'm going to say next. Everything happened through Ref Wayne's website, right? Now that website is down, which means that investors cannot access their pub coins or their money. What this also means is that the scam have successfully been launched, worked and exited. So because the website is off and because people cannot access their funds and their pub coins, you guys can most definitely guess where it is. Mr. Founder. So now that you guys understand the definition of fraud, would you say Ref Wayne needs to be in jail for fraud? I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm going to make a whole lot of more videos like this. So I sincerely hope you guys will engage with it and you guys will like comment and share it around so that other people can also see it and then also subscribe if you're new here there's always space for new subscribers i will see you guys in the next video cheers